Coming up in this video, I'll show you how I painted the Lord Executioner for the Night Haunt faction of Age of Sigmar. Okay guys, here's a look at the finished miniature. This is the look we're going to be going for. Starting out, I'm going to prime him white. I'm using Vallejo Premium White Primer. You can also use a spray can white. I use white even though he's got some dark cloth because it helps the ethereal parts and the ghostly bits to pop. Next I'll cover his upper cloth area, including his hood or shroud, in uh, Stegodon Scale Green. And I'm airbrushing it on in a messy fashion because I know I'll be painting over some of the areas that it splatters on after the fact. Uh, you can absolutely just hand brush this if you like. When that's dry, I come back with Sotec Green and I'm airbrushing it from above in a bit of a Zenithal or Zenithal highlight technique. Um, so just a very broad and, and uh, you know, unfocused highlight, but go ahead and paint that on as uh, if you prefer and just paint it on the upper parts of his sort of his shoulders and the top of his head and things like that. Hand brush or airbrush, your favorite gunmetal color. I'm using premium Vallejo Air. Some people prefer Vallejo Metal Color gunmetal. Either works fine and I just airbrush or you can also hand brush uh, the axe blade. We're doing the axe first because we'll be layering the ghostly part over top of that later. Grab your favorite silver. I'm using an old mithril silver. You can use Stormhost or any other. And I'm just taking a, one of my old dry brushes and stippling it on around the blade and, and on the top of the of the axe head. Um, doing this to create an under highlight uh, and we're going to be washing over that with some interesting products. So it doesn't have to be precise by any means. Next I'm tinting the whole axe with a ov all over wash of Vallejo uh, rust, Vallejo model wash rust. Uh, it goes on pretty strong, but once it dries, it, it um, you know it fades a bit, so it won't look a little bit. It won't look over the top when it dries. Once it is dry, take the Typhus Corrosion Technical Paint from GW, and as I've said in previous videos, I tend to stipple this on. I put it in areas where you might expect corrosion to form or around some of the sculpted areas of corrosion where it's pitted and things like that. Um, less is more with this, you don't have to go too crazy. And I do do this before the textured rust like Ryza Rust. Next I'll take Vallejo Model Wash Dark Rust and I'm going to apply that in the pitted areas, uh, in areas where uh, one air part of the axe meets the other, like the axe head meeting the, the haft, and it's going to create, well, a darker, darker splotches of rust. I'm going to let that dry before the next step. Grab your Ryza Rust dry paint, and again, I tend to stipple this on. It's very, very bright orange, so less is more again, and I sometimes if there's a little too much, I'll wipe it off with my finger, or you know, I'll just kind of try to tone it down a bit, because again, it's it, it can overpower the area, um, but it is a really, really nice rust product, so I recommend it. When the axe head's done, it looks something like this. As with all my night haunts, I'm airbrushing Eldritch onto the ghostly parts and up to where it meets the cloth that we painted previously. And it's okay, again, because he's ghostly, I don't care if that kind of overlaps the, the cloth a little bit, although generally I can keep it keep it pretty neat and then just kind of fade it out um, onto the towards the end of the ghostly parts where it's going to be more of an ooth one gray later you can also hand paint this without much trouble you could just do it in thin coats then I airbrush ooth one gray onto the ends of each of the smoky ghostly tendrils and in, uh, maybe here and there where there's a spot that seems like it would be kind of sticking out or a bump where it might look a little ghostly you don't have to airbrush this, you can absolutely dry brush it and uh, sort of layer dry brush blend it onto the um, Eldritch. So 
super fast flash of uh, <laughs> Citadel Nuln Oil. This is the non-gloss because it tends to stain more, uh, which is the effect we actually want. We're going to darken up that um, Stegodon scale green and the Sotek green. To be honest, my final model, I wish I had made it darker and so this part of the cloth. So if you want, you could wait for this to dry and apply a second layer to really darken it. Very optional step here, I'm airbrushing Sybarite Green between the Eldritch and the uh, Ultron Grey, just to create a little more of a transition there. Uh, it's really, really subtle. You could skip it. And uh, then again, if you're dry brushing, this actually might help you create a smoother transition. So it's up to you. Then I come in with Goss Blaster Green, which is an edge paint from Citadel, and I'm doing some edges along the sharpest points of the Eldritch parts. So wherever there's holes, the edges of the holes, or like the really sharp parts of the, it looks like cloth, but it's not. But the weird thing is later, I actually came back and cleaned it up with some Eldritch again, and that basically obliterates the Goss Blaster edge highlighting. So you may want to wait till later to do this step. Up to you again. For some of these steps, I'm going to be using a staining technique um, or tinting. So to do that, I go back with white paint and fix them up. So for example, the um, looks like spirit hosts over his shoulders. I want to get rid of anything that I paint, you know, any splatter I got on there. With my night haunts, I'm doing their arms or faces underbelly blue from P3. So just paint the, basically here, it's just his forearms and hands. You can see, by the way, that I did not thin this paint enough and it's a little chunky and streaky. So when in doubt, thin your paint more than I did here. Here's a highlight for that upper cloth hood area. I'm using Temple Guard Blue right out of the pot because I'm dry brushing it. You can absolutely hand layer this if you want a neater effect, but I am painting an army here and I'm not too fussed about it. And I think it actually kind of looks cool to have the cloth. It's old ragged cloth, so I don't mind if it looks a little bit sort of streaky from the dry brushing. But anyway, your mileage may vary, so um, approach it the way you want, but that's the color I used here to highlight. For the wooden gallows on his back, I decided to try staining the white with scale 75 ink tents wood. Uh, it's an interesting color. It ended up looking, it looks like a very sort of yellowish wood, almost like a plywood or something, which I was cool with that. Uh, like I said, I'm sort of experimenting and trying new products every, you know, as often as I can. I've never really used this before. Thought I'd give it a shot. Um, but in the end, it's wood. So you can absolutely paint this brown. You could wash it with Agrax Earthshade. You can paint this however you want. It's, it, there's no mystery here. While that's drying, take your Nylac Oxide and wash it all over the Spirit Host, which should still be white, and also his um, underbelly blue forearms and hands, which I don't think I captured here on, on camera. I was experimenting some more, doing some weird things. I took the light rust and tried washing it over the white of the hangman's noose, the rope. It ended up looking orangey-brown and not very convincingly rope. So. I would probably skip this step and find a different way to paint it. If you're stuck, try some Baylor Brown and wash it with Agrax Earthshade and you'll get a nice sort of dirty yellow rope look. Another debatable step, Ink Tense uh, Scale 75 Chestnut. I washed over the white of the axe handle, which I had touched up previously with that P3 Moro white. Uh, not super convinced about this one either. I've had mixed results with staining wood this way. Uh, I find that maybe the Vallejo inks do a better job for this, like they're brown, etc. But again, it's an axe handle. You could paint it any color you want. For his shackle and the little um, metal bit on the on the gallows, I took uh, scale 75 decayed metal. You can use any dark metal you want, like a warp lock bronze would work just fine. For the strips of cloth, I painted them more white with the intention of staining them again later, just using this weird staining and tinting technique. You can totally just paint these Rackarth Flesh or any kind of light color you want and give them a wash. 
wanted to pull out a little bit more of the definition in his um, hood around the face area, that sort of skull that's suggested. So I took some Baharoth blue edge paint and applied that around the eye sockets and the nose bridge and the mouth with the not quite teeth. At that point, the strips of cloth are dry. I take a seraphim sepia uh, wash straight out of the bottle and I used it to tint those strips of cloth. Again, strips of cloth, you can paint them any way you want. I highlighted the decayed metal by adding a little bit of gunmetal, mixing it roughly 50-50, and just applied it to some of the higher points or the little uh, nail holding it in or bolt. And I wasn't super convinced by the result. You can highlight that metal pretty much any way you want. The forearms and hands that have been washed with Nylac Oxide come back and highlight those with underbelly blue, once again thinning them more than I did. Now go dry brush the spirit host with Ulth One Grey. You can dry brush them as heavy or as light as you want. Uh, it's just to pull out some of the highlights and the skull faces on there. The ends of these tutorial videos are often these little sort of extra finishing up the model steps, lots of little details and, and sort of dotting the I's and crossing the T's. One example of that, I wanted to even more highlight, um, even further highlight that face on the hood. So I added a little bit of white to that Beharoth blue and just did slightly less um, aggressive highlights on things like cheekbones and the sharpest uh, outer part of the mouth and things like that. And then I took a little bit of uh, Vallejo Black Airbrush Primer, uh, using it because it's already sort of pre-thinned and easy to use here and just sort of filled in the eye sockets and the nose socket to bring a little more definition. Next up we're going to matte varnish basically the whole model except for the axe head and but again don't even don't mind if you get some on there it's fine. This is to take, take away any shine that's left over from using any of the inks or the technical paints or washes things like that. Here's a look at the finished model, the finished Lord Executioner. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I know a lot of it was close-ups of my fingers trying to hold the model. I'm still working on that. Thanks for your patience. Consider subscribing for more videos that are coming up and follow me on social media if you're interested in my thoughts about the hobby and, and work in progress shots. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.